I spent most of my time in the world of technology and human DNA. And we're about to embark an incredible journey, a very tough journey, where we're going to make decisions about the future of our species, about life, not only on this planet, but probably the next planet in our lifetime. And often I ask myself, how do I prepare myself for some of the decisions that we're going to have to make? And I don't know. So the journey that I want to take you on today actually starts here. This is the Mayan jungle in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. And about two hours south of Cancun, around the town of Tulum, the Mayan jungle looks like this. You have these dirt roads, and you go into the jungle, and there are these beautiful trees and plants and crazy insects that you've never seen before. And every once in a while, you find something like this. And this is a cenote. A cenote is a hole of water in the middle of the jungle. And these holes of water, and there are more than 100 of these in the Yucatan Peninsula, were created about 65 million years ago. And over millions of years, water filtered into them. The Mayans thought these places were sacred. And they thought of them as the door to the underworld. And that's where I want to take you today. Now, before we go there, I need to prepare you the same way that I prepare myself every time I go there. So in a minute, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and do a little breathing exercise. And I know what you're thinking, like, oh boy, here we go. Um, no, it's going to be short and easy. I'm going to show you first what we're going to do, and then I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and do this with me. We're going to put our hands in our stomach just like this. Not yet, just see me do it first. And I'm basically going to breathe in slowly into my stomach, then hold that inhale for two seconds and slowly exhale, something like this. Okay, now close your eyes. Put your hand in your stomach and inhale very slowly through your mouth, only into your belly. Hold it for a couple of seconds and exhale really slowly through your mouth. Hold a couple of seconds. And one more time, keep your eyes closed. In into the belly. Hold for two seconds and exhale slowly. Now keep your eyes closed for a second. Just hear my voice. Three things are happening. One, your heart rate has slowed down significantly. Two, every time you exhale, you get rid of carbon dioxide in your blood. And three, your mind is calming down. No matter how you started, Five minutes ago, no matter how you felt 15 minutes ago, right now you feel calmer already. And I want you to keep in mind this feeling. Don't open your eyes yet. Now, I want you to grab your arms and wrap them around you and feel the snug hug of someone you trust, this tight hug. Put some pressure into the rib cage. And that's the second sensation I want you to keep in mind. Okay, so now you're ready. You can open your eyes now. So, we're now inside that cenote. This is called the pit. And what I'm doing is I'm breathing just like we did for about five minutes. And what I do is breathe in the stomach, then the chest, then the upper chest, and then I dive down. And I swim down 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet. And sometimes we swim down while sometimes we actually pull ourselves down a line just like this. 20 feet. 30 feet. And something really interesting happens at 33 feet. There's another atmosphere of pressure. So now your lungs have gone from the size of a watermelon to half their size. And when that happens, you're less buoyant which means you become weight, which means you don't need to swim down anymore or pull yourself down this line to go down. You let gravity do the work and you drop down 40 feet, 
50 feet. Sixty feet, seventy feet, eighty feet. And sometimes we fall down to this incredible mystical world of clouds and trees in the depths of the jungle. Other times we fall down and follow the light all the way to the depths of the underworld. Now, something magical happens down here. On one side, your brain is doing all these incredible things with your body to keep you alive. Your heart rate has slowed down even more. Your blood flow is going away from your limbs, from your legs and your arms, and is focusing around your torso and the back of your brain to keep you alive. And your spleen is overproducing red blood cells. And all of this is called the mammalian reflex. While this is happening, your brain is incredibly calm, and it enters this space of almost numbness. You're floating in time. You lose perception of space. You don't feel a distinction between your body and the water around you and the jungle around you. And you don't see a lot of technology here. I have a wetsuit on, I have a mask long fins. It's basically a human body floating in water. A bunch of cells floating in water. And that is probably one of the oldest forms of existence of life in this planet. And somehow, I feel a connection through millions and billions of years. Now, like every other journey, this journey also has to finish. And sometimes we forget if we've been down there for two minutes, for three, for four. Time has stopped. I'm not exactly sure where I am. And it's not until you break the surface as you come up and you take the deep first breath that you realize where you've been. I don't know what happens down there, but it's magical. I feel a sense of connection, something that fills me every time I come up from the underworlds, fills me with this unique energy that comes from something very, very old and pure and beautiful. And if you, like me, are spending most of your days thinking about how to use technology to move our species and our societies forward, I would invite you to find something that connects you to nature in a deep way, something that has nothing to do with technology, that has a sense of old, old something, something biological, something natural. And I'm not suggesting that tomorrow everybody swims down to 100 feet and comes back up, although if you want to be a free diver and join us, fantastic, you could do that. But I do know that the more we allow ourselves to spend time connecting with nature in unexpected ways, in deep rooted ways, and let ourselves be vulnerable in between the lines of light or water or jungle, we'll probably make better decisions um, that are necessary for the future that we're building right now with technology 
and humanity and our species. Thank you.